wisdom, the only person who can provide the answers, and of course that necessarily means a tendency to law me and say, you shut up and you sit down. And that then destroys the very accountability of the legislative process to the people. Indeed, it is interesting that just today, in the morning, I saw a post which said, be patient, let the executive president decide. So this cult of putting everything, backing everything on one leader is a total undermining of democracy. It is in that situation that we have a right to say no, we will not shut up, we will express our views and we will ask that law making and policy formulation respects our rights. In this context, Parliament has a role and responsibility in protecting the rights of people because it is an institution of its own. It is key in the areas of finance and public security and many others. So, parliamentarians may ask to shut up and sit down in Parliament, but that's not what we expect of them in, the, in, in relation to the interaction to the public. They seek our vote and they have no right to shut up and not respond when lawmaking violates the fundamental rights of our people. I would like to cite from the preamble of our constitution to indicate why our public expectations, are, why are the expectations of the public are correct. What does it say in the preamble to the 1978 constitution? That the representatives have taken on a responsibility to achieve the goals of a democracy and the immutable principles of representative democracy, assuring the people freedom, equality, justice, and, and also the independence of the judiciary. That is their responsibility. And if that is their responsibility, they owe it to the people of this country to stand up and say no to these shut up laws. It is also important for parliamentarians and citizens to know that the dangers of a single leader's vision and aspiration and insight in dissent is that it's total inconsistency in lawmaking. How is it that you can, you can ask for uh, pluralism, respect for the rights of minorities, and have an anti-terrorism act which is a replication of the PT? How is it that you can have a gender equality law and a bill on women, peace and security and have a PTA? And as pointed out, how is it that you can have so many laws on violence against women and children which are not enforced and then not enforced for years, no resources for enforcement and then have an online safety bill which has a presumption to say this is being done to prevent violence against women and children. So, in conclusion, I think what we have to say today is democracy will survive only when we fight for it, as it has been said. And to do that, we need a partnership of citizenry, of professionals, etc. All of us to say that we want democracy and not autocracy and dictatorship in this country. And if that message can be given powerfully, we also say that you cannot have economic growth without righteous governance that is respectful of the fundamental rights of a sovereign people uh, to have the quality of life that they have been guaranteed in that constitution. And that last text in the constitution has a Pali text which says, Devo Vasatu Kalena Sasa Sampartu Kepucha Pito Bhavatu Lokocha Raja Bhavati Dhamma. What does that say? May the rains fall in season, may there be a good harvest, may there be well-being in the world, and may the ruler be righteous. So we want rights. Righteousness is the protection of rights. Thank you.